Australia has a lot of solar. About a third of all homes in the country are powered by the sun. By comparison, in the US, just 4% of homes have solar on their roof. And sure, we could be doing a lot better. But if you look at a lot of countries in Europe, you'll see that many of them have far less solar than Australia too. And I know what you're thinking. Australia has a lot of sunshine, and that's true. But as I covered in my video on solar water heaters, sunshine alone rarely explains why some countries build clean energy and others don't. If it did, you'd expect states in the US like Florida or Texas, which get a lot of sunshine, to have a lot of rooftop solar, but they don't. In fact, Northern states like Vermont and Maine have more rooftop solar per capita than both Florida and Texas. If sunshine alone told the whole story, you'd expect Turkey to have more solar than Germany. But again, that's not the case. Germany has eight times more solar per capita than Turkey. So yes, Australia has a lot of sunshine, but clearly something else is going on here. And that something is low cost. In this video, we'll explore why solar is so much cheaper in Australia than the United States and what that means for all of us. In Australia, rooftop solar costs $1 per watt. For perspective, the average cost of installing a watt in the US is maybe $2.80. Um, varies between sort of $2.20 and $3.50 roughly, depending upon what state you're in. Or if you, like me, you have a house in San Francisco, it was $5.85 per watt. That's Saul Griffith. Should I put my shirt on the right way around? Nice. He's a MacArthur genius, clean energy entrepreneur, and most relevant to us, he's installed rooftop solar on a home in both the United States and Australia. Saul spent a lot of time researching the difference between the two countries' solar markets. So I asked him to explain some of the differences to me. But at the beginning of our interview, he stopped me. He said that I was getting ahead of myself and that before we talk about those differences, we needed to talk about something else first. And and I, I you know, I, I, I think actually you, what we really should do is talk about what there is to win here. Rooftop solar is one of the most effective tools we have to save energy, cut emissions, and address the climate crisis. But I'm gonna assume that you already know that. People have literally been talking about some of this stuff since Jimmy Carter slapped some solar panels on the roof of the White House 50 years ago. What I think is less appreciated is just how much money solar can save the average household. And what you can say about Australian rooftop solar is that it is the cheapest retail energy ever provided to a consumer ever in human history. It is extraordinary. Most people think about electricity prices in terms of dollars per kilowatt hour, not the cost per watt I mentioned earlier. In Australia, rooftop solar costs about seven cents per kilowatt hour. By comparison, in some of the biggest US states like New York and California, people are spending more like 20 to 25 cents for electricity from the grid. In Californian cities like San Diego and San Francisco, people are paying 30 to 35 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity. And the problem of expensive electricity isn't unique to the United States. In Europe, the average household spends about 25 cents per kilowatt hour on electricity. But that's just an average. In Denmark, people spend 45 cents. In Germany, 32. Italy, 31. Now, a 20 to 30 cent difference might not sound like much, but people living in the countries like the ones I just listed use a lot of electricity. I mention all of this to show that if we can get cheap Australian style rooftop solar in homes all around the world, we can save households thousands of dollars on their electricity bill every year. And if we power our electric vehicles with this energy, we can save even more. And we can do all of that while cutting carbon emissions and air pollution. So that's what we have to gain if we can figure out how to build a bunch of cheap solar and then power all of our stuff with it. But I promised you a video on why rooftop solar is so much cheaper in Australia than the United States. So let's get into some of those differences. When people talk about rooftop solar, they generally break things into two broad categories, hard and soft costs. So the hard cost of solar is the hardware, the hard things. So the solar modules are, that's the silicon cells, the glass on top, the aluminum frame around the edge. There's cost for the racking and a little bit of the hardware that bolts onto the roof. When you look up at a rooftop solar installation, these are the costs that you see, but this isn't what costs the most. In the US, these hard costs only make up about 20% of the total price. The soft costs, all the stuff that you don't see, make up the remaining 80%. The soft costs are things like the cost of permitting, the overhead charged by the installer, inspection costs, even the cost of getting the sale. One way to remember these costs is by thinking about the three Ps, permits, paperwork, and people. 
That includes stuff like paying marketing and salespeople to go find customers. It includes the boring paperwork you need to fill out to get approval from your city or utility to put solar panels on your roof. And included within this is a process called interconnection, which is just a nightmare in most parts of America. That's basically connecting to the electric grid, which utilities make really difficult in order to protect their revenue. And then finally, it includes the salaries of the people who actually install the panels, the labor costs. When you look at the cost differences between Australia and the United States, you'll see that the hard costs are basically the same. A solar module or aluminum rack costs about the same in the US as it does in Australia. So that's not what explains the difference in the total cost. Another cost that's pretty much the same between the two countries is labor. Some people might be tempted to say, well, Australian labor is cheaper. And actually, no, um, the Australian rooftop solar installers are taking home about 10% more as an hourly wage than American solar installers. And it's worth pausing here to reflect on how crazy that is. Before working on this story, I would have looked up at a rooftop solar system and thought that most of the costs were the expense of panels and the labor that went into installing them. And if you live in Australia, that is where most of your money will go when you buy solar. But in the US, most of the money goes to those three Ps. It basically goes to useless bureaucracy and paperwork. So what's going on here? Well, I was hoping you could run a play for us. We are in a really big hurry. Sure. What's the plate? Two nine T number. According to a recent study, it takes anywhere from 25 to 100 days to get a rooftop solar permit in the US. That's because before you put solar panels on your roof, you usually have to get approval from your local government and the utility. And oftentimes you have to work with multiple government agencies to get that approval. In Australia, the process is quite a bit different. In Australia, you fill out a form on your cell phone and you have a permit 24 hours later. And so the cost of obtaining that permit is zero. Even if you pay the installer to do it, because they'll often do that process for you, you know, you're paying them 20 bucks. The longer permitting process in the US creates other problems too. Earlier I mentioned the three Ps, permits, paperwork, and people. The reality is that these aren't separate disconnected categories. They're all intertwined. For example, a complicated permitting process requires filling out a lot of paperwork. And that requires more people. And that ultimately means more cost. Longer permitting times also results in higher marketing and sales costs. In the US, 30 to 50% of people that sign up to get solar never end up going through with the purchase. They've made the decision, they're waiting for the permit, and they're like, ah, oh, I'm fed up, and then they leave. That's part of, that leads to the reason that the cost of sale is so high. And this isn't that surprising if you think about it. I mean, can you think of any other product that you buy that not only do you have to wait three months to get it, but you also have to fill out a bunch of paperwork and then deal with the government multiple times? It's a miracle that anybody goes through with this process at all. According to one estimate, it costs solar companies in the US about $2,500 on average to acquire each customer. In Australia, by comparison, it costs a couple hundred dollars. In Australia, solar is so cheap that you, you barely need to sell it. Literally, you talk to your neighbor over the fence and the neighbor's like, oh mate, I got rooftop solar, it's the cheapest electricity ever. Saved $1,000 this year. And then you buy it. Add all this stuff up and you get two very different pictures. Earlier, Saul mentioned that in Australia, rooftop solar costs a dollar per watt compared to the US where it costs 250 to 350 a watt. For a five kilowatt system, that's the difference between a total installation cost of $5,000 and between 12 and $17,000. And this is probably obvious, but I feel like I should say it anyway, this is for the same exact product. It's not like when you install solar in the US, you somehow get higher quality electricity. You just have to deal with more permits, paperwork, and people. I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. So what can the US do to start bringing solar costs down? The most obvious place to start is by streamlining the permitting process and requiring that utilities make it easy to connect to the grid. Australia did this by creating national installation standards, training their workforce, and creating an audit program that eliminates the need for permitting entirely. But that little bit of uh, government training, government oversight actually has kept the industry very honest and makes sure that the quality of the installations are very high, which eliminates this per giant permitting cost and inspection cost. There are already some efforts underway to create these kinds of national standards in the US. One of the reasons Saul knows so much about all this is that the organization he co-founded, Rewiring America, is working on solving this problem. I'll put a link below for those of you that want to learn about their work and how you can get involved. There are also some cities in the US that are trying to streamline this process. Some cities like Tucson have been able to cut their average permitting time from 20 days to less than one day. 
San Diego did something similar back in 2016 and saw the total number of installations grow by 600% in a single year. Every single city in America could start doing this tomorrow. But the reality is that most of them probably won't unless people like me and you demand it. There is a place with people who look like you, who are a civilized democracy that have really, really cheap solar energy and you could have it too, but you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna have to fight for it. You're gonna have to show popular demand for it and you're gonna have to have the, the will to win the long-term regulatory and bureaucracy fight.